Dr. Paul Mason, optimize sun exposure to benefit from nitric oxide and vitamin D. There's something special about sunshine that makes us live longer. Even after accounting for skin cancer, sunshine reduces the rate of death from a number of conditions. Let's take a look at a Swedish study and it compared those with a history of sunbathing vacations compared with those who had never been on a sunbathing vacation. And what they found was that there was a statistically significant trend for lower mortality in those who had been on sunbathing vacations. This was also a Swedish study, and it looked at almost 30,000 females over 20 years, and it compared sun exposure behaviours to mortality. And the different shades of grey you can see here in the graph represent different causes of mortality. And this first graph shows the mortality over a 20-year period in those with the most active avoidance of the sun. This is the group with the most active sun exposure. And you can see even further a larger reduction in mortality. The more sun exposure we have, the more likely we are to have skin cancer. But on the other side of the coin, UV radiation is associated with a reduced risk of about 14 other different types of cancers as well as reducing the risk of heart disease and diabetes. Let's have a look at a study that looked in particular at skin cancer and mortality. So this graph here compares the mortality rate in those with a diagnosis of melanoma skin cancer compared to those without a history of any skin cancer. So the light grey line here shows those with melanomas and the darker line here shows people without any skin cancer. And you'll notice that there's very little variation between the two groups. What about non-melanoma skin cancer? You can see here in the light grey line that those with non-melanoma skin cancers, on average, lived longer than those without any skin cancer. You can see there's almost 10 years difference between the two groups. Even in the presence of skin cancer, sun exposure might be beneficial. Ultraviolet radiation has a smaller wavelength than visible light, and we divide it into three categories, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA, which you can see in yellow, easily penetrates the atmosphere, and most of it reaches the ground. In contrast, a lot of the ultraviolet B radiation is attenuated by the ozone layer before it reaches the ground. The thicker the layer of atmosphere that it passes through, the less of it that will end up striking the ground. So when the sun's directly overhead, it's passing through the shortest amount of atmosphere before it reaches us. So we're getting relatively proportional amounts of UVA and UVB exposure. But when the sun is lower in the sky, as in earlier in the day and later in the day, the UV radiation passes through a much greater mass of atmosphere, and especially the ozone layer. And this mostly affects UVB levels. So you can see here in this graphic that when the sun's coming up in the morning, the amount of ultraviolet B radiation is actually far less. This is the main cause of sunburn, and it's the principal cause of skin cancer. Both accumulated UVB exposure and intermittent intense exposure have been shown to contribute to different types of skin cancer. Accumulated UVB exposure and intermittent intense exposure contribute to skin cancer. On the other side of the coin though, UVB is what leads to the production of vitamin D in our skin from cholesterol. And it's this vitamin D that many people attribute the health effects of the sun to. But as we're about to learn, while vitamin D is really important for a bone health, it doesn't significantly impact our lifespan. UVA, in contrast, is far less implicated than skin cancer. To a degree, it can cause a slight increase in risk, but much less than with UVB. It does play a role in skin ageing, and it might also contribute to wrinkles. UVA radiation releases a substance called nitric oxide in the skin. And this is a substance which actually helps you live longer. I'll repeat, UVA radiation releases a substance called nitric oxide into the skin. And it's this nitric oxide which explains the link between reduced mortality and sun exposure. These pictures here show how nitric oxide is increased by increasing exposure to UVA radiation. UVB produces vitamin D in our skin, but vitamin D does not help our lifespan, although it does help our bone health. And UVB causes skin cancer. UVA produces nitric oxide, and 
Nitric oxide extends our lifespan. UVA is not implicated in skin cancer. The problem is vitamin D just doesn't explain the increase in lifespan. It is incredibly important for bone health, but it doesn't give us the huge mortality benefits that we saw from the other epidemiological studies. So where does vitamin D come from? Well, we can get about 5 to 10% of our daily requirements from food. Now, very few foods naturally contain vitamin D. Fatty fish, liver and eggs. So another source is needed. That source is the sunshine. UVB rays strike the skin and convert cholesterol in the skin to vitamin D. And it's also when the sun strikes the skin, we get a little bit of UVA exposure and that produces nitric oxide. But as we said, vitamin D could be predicted to be associated with all-cause mortality because it's also associated with nitric oxide release. And this is indeed what we see. This graph here is from a meta-analysis. And what you can see is that in those with a low vitamin D, the risk of dying is almost double that of people with high levels of vitamin D. Well, let's see what happens when we give vitamin D as a supplement. This was a study of more than 2,600 subjects. And the two lines here measure the death rate. The higher the line, the higher the death rate. And you can see there's virtually no difference between the supplemented group, represented by the solid line, and the placebo group, represented by the dashed line. And this finding has been replicated many times. Vitamin D is probably not the answer. Let's take a closer look at nitric oxide, the substance that's released in the skin in response to UVA exposure. This is a study in which participants were exposed to either real or sham ultraviolet radiation of the UVA type. And the effect on blood pressure was monitored. And you can see here that the real UVA exposure in the lower line led to a much more significant drop in blood pressure. And this effect occurs because nitric oxide, which is released from UVA exposure to the skin, actually relaxes our blood vessels. Now, nitric oxide also benefits our blood glucose level by improving the sensitivity of insulin. And high blood sugar is known as a risk factor in many diseases, heart attacks, stroke, dementia. So then, we might predict that blood sugar control would be better in summer than winter, and that's exactly what we see. This is a measurement of average blood sugar using a test called HbA1c, and that measures how much glucose is in the circulation over a period of about four to six weeks. And this graph from a Northern Hemisphere study shows that HbA1c is significantly lower in the summer. And understand that HbA1c is one of the most powerful markers of disease that we have. A reduction in HbA1c is very significant. If indeed nitric oxide lowers our blood pressure and improves our blood sugar control, the question is, how do we get more of it from sun exposure while minimising our risk of skin cancer? Now remember when the sun's lower in the sky, we're receiving proportionally more UVA than UVB, and it's that UVA that produces more nitric oxide. It then makes sense to expose ourselves to the sun more when the sun is lower in the sky. Now, what happens if you're outside and you don't know what the UV index is? Well, you can use the length of your shadow as a pretty good surrogate marker. Remember that when the sun's low in the sky, you're getting proportionally more UVA and less UVB. Generally speaking, if your shadow is as tall as you are, you should be able to spend at least half an hour in the sun without any protection. More sun exposure equals less mortality and more skin cancer risk and reduced risk of 14 cancers, heart disease, and diabetes. High vitamin D in our blood is healthy. Food provides only five to 10% of our vitamin D. Vitamin D supplements are not effective. UVB exposure generates vitamin D in our skin. UVB produces vitamin D in our skin, but vitamin D does not help our lifespan, although it does help our bone health. And UVB causes skin cancer. UVA produces nitric oxide, and nitric oxide extends our lifespan. UVA is not implicated in skin cancer. So, how to optimize our sun time? Get more UVA and less UVB. If the sun is lower in the sky, it produces more UVA and less UVB. If your shadow is as tall as you, stay in the sun for up to 30 minutes 
with no need for skin protection.